Hello everyone, I'm Colin Knett. Today we're going to be working on some table saw throat plates, also called inserts. And I'm going to show you how you can make them. There's a variety of different ways of making this. And we're going to look at one way to make some really good quality throat plates. So here we are at my table saw and this of course is the throat plate that came with the saw and it includes a slot for the blade guard which we're going to talk about later on. Now the reason it's so important that we do that we put a throat plate in here no matter what we're doing is because it's a safety hazard if we don't put that in. And if you're cutting a dado, if you've got a dado set and you don't have a throat plate to put in there, you need to stop and make one. And for this saw, what I'm going to be using is a good quality plywood, and it's a half inch plywood. It's just slightly below the table, but I'm going to show you how to fix that later on. And when you learn how to make these throat plates, you can make them in all sorts of different widths uh, and you can reuse them for years and years and years. So let's get started. Now there are many different kinds of table saws and many different kinds of inserts and of course all I can show you today is what I do with mine and uh, you'll have to use uh, whatever adaptions you might have to do with yours and hopefully a lot of what I do today is going to be able to apply to what you do. Now the first thing when I first the first throat plates that I made I made them on the router and I used a, a templating bit and what I discovered was see how that when I put a little bit of pressure on there see how that moves down there a little bit and I found that when I was making templates that it they were a little bit on the loose side when I was making inserts they were a bit loose and so what I did was instead of using this and there's a few reasons that I didn't want to use this first of them first of all I if I ever hit my router blade with this. Um, I didn't want to destroy my sort of my first and only and sometimes these are metal so there's another reason that's another reason why you might want to make a plastic template and this was pretty simple. You can cut this plastic with um, many table saw blades will cut this. I, I use a, uh, an 80 tooth blade and then of course you can't cut around the circle but you can uh, even on a bandsaw you can cut that then sand that down with a sander but that's what I use now is just a plastic insert and it sits over top you know when you see that it's an exact replica of my insert and, it, and it'll actually fit in there unfortunately when I have a blade in here I can't put anything in here because the blades sit too high but what I do I cut my blanks and I've just pre-cut this so that you can see and I cut it exactly the same width as the insert. So that takes care of a lot of the cutting on both sides. Then the next thing I do, and I like, I'm trying to keep things as simple as I can. And now the next thing I do is just, just simply draw a circle around like that. Now you could cut that out if you can see that. You could cut that out on a jigsaw if you have a jigsaw. I'm going to go to my bandsaw and just cut that out and then I'm just going to touch it up on my sander so that I get a, a nice uh, even fit on that and I should while I'm here, no it doesn't matter, I can put I should put a circle somewhere there just so I have a hole to pull it out. So let's go over to the bandsaw and let's cut that out. What I found is if I take my time uh, and go as close to the line as I can and then just do a tiny bit of sanding, these things usually fit the first time. So I'm not going to make you sit through the whole thing, uh, but you'll get an idea what this looks like. Now I just checked the insert on my table and of course it doesn't quite fit um, and there's a little bit of a bump there so I'm lucky I have this um, horizontal belt sander you can use that you know you could clamp this in your vise and use a 
uh, random orbital sander to do that. There are lots of different ways you could do this. So I'm just going to quickly do this and I'll, I'll check it and make sure it fits. And then when we come back, we'll be over at the table saw again. Now comes the fun part of making the insert. Now there's the insert that I just made. I just drilled a hole in it and it fits nicely but there's a tiny bit of a wobble and it's sitting a little bit low and here's how we're going to fix that. What we're going to do is put a little bit of this painter's tape on the four corners that the plate sits on and we don't even really want to stick it down that well. It doesn't really matter as long as it's stuck down a little bit. Uh, that's really all we need. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put something on here that we're going to use as a leveler. Now I used to use, when I first started doing this, I used to use this Bondo and any of you who are car guys will know what Bondo is. They use this for small um, auto body repairs. It's really hard. I still use it for different things from time to time in the workshop. Um, but for this, what I discovered was this hot melt glue, actually, when it's dry, it's it's very hard. So I've just, when on an experiment, I tried it and it actually works very well. So all we do is put a little sort of dab of glue on the four corners right on top of the right on top of the, the tape, and if I run, don't run out here, and before it dries, we put our plate on, and then we just use something, something handy here, to make sure that it's leveled off, and we just let that sit for a few minutes, and when we come back, and it's only going to be a couple minutes, that will be dry and hard. In fact, it probably is now. Uh, and we'll take it off and have a quick look at it. Okay, I'll let that sit for a couple minutes. And now I'm, I'm just going to give a little bit of a tug because I need to break the tape loose because it was stuck to... And there, you can see. And now you can actually, well, when it's hard, you can actually peel a tape off. Not that it really matters at all, but... Um, that one's stuck on there, and that doesn't even really matter. Uh, I can leave that on there. Now that's, that is a bare insert, and next I'm going to show you how to pull the blade up through that. Okay, the plate's all done. I just took a moment to put the screw hole in the end there, and you can see in my template where I have a hole right there. There it is, you can see the hole. Uh, so that was easy to put in. I just countersunk it, made sure that everything is flat. And now when I run something over it, now this plate is actually very solid in there. And I can see that it's actually flat and even with the table. And now I've got a blade installed there. So all I'm going to do is just bring it over the edge, turn the saw on and just wind the blade up into the new throat plate. And that's just how easy it is to make a brand new throat plate, custom fit for that blade. The last thing I want to talk about today is making a slot for, in my case, it will fit a riving knife, uh, but mostly I use the blade guard in there and it's really simple to do. And the way I do that is in my plastic template. If you notice, I've got a hole there and I have another hole up here and they coincide with marks that I've made from my original throat plate. And all that I do with that is set that over top my blade guard and just put a mark there and a mark there. And then I can use my Forstner bit because my Forstner bit is the, is the perfect size for that. So I drill a hole there and another hole there and then I can cut that out with my bandsaw or with a jigsaw and that creates a slot that I can then put my blade guard, uh, the, the uh, holder for my blade guard in there. So pretty simple solution for that. Well, that concludes my video on making inserts or throat plates for the table saw. And you know, when it comes to your safety, uh, this is something you don't want to ignore. I'm Colin Cadet for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.